anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed, at least you enjoyed the break. And now I hope that I could ask you, Ella, to show St. Alban's picture, the cathedral, which is number three, but let's yeah. see. Yeah. And then the door. And it's a kind of a forerunner to, um, to the future of which uh, our next uh, guest speaker, Oskar K uh, O.K. Krajewski, will be telling us. So I'll, I have a kind of a review of the past. So Ella, whenever you, the picture is ready, just put it on. And uh, 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 so with this culture and with, you know, we had this biskupin and the lake village, and we had a painting uh, from me and uh, music and language. And here is architecture and uh, St. Alban's Cathedral in the town that uh, used to be called Verulamium at the times when the Romans were here. Uh, they didn't make it to Poland except uh, the amber uh, route uh, to get to the Baltic Sea. Mm, and um, the way they, they marked uh, later on in, in the records the, the town of Calicia, which is Kalish, so kind of we get to mention in antiquity. Uh, anyway, uh, St. Alban, uh, a martyr, uh, a Roman soldier who was uh, giving uh, shelter, hiding a, a priest, and of course, because the, the religion was still banned, Christianity, so he was uh, he died martyr's death, and the cathedral was built uh, in this place to commemorate him. And in the next picture, uh, you will see the door, and I'm sure as soon as you see the door, Ella, may I ask for uh, the door picture? Uh, you will. Ash, Ash, sorry, which picture is that? The sorry, door, I got lost. The now. door. The number, number, four. number, number four. four. Thank you. <laughs> number four, it is. Yes. Thank uh, you. It is Gniezno. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Let me just change the picture. Yes. Oh. Joanna, you're putting me under pressure here. <laughs> but I am trying. There you go, guys. I hope you like the door. Yes. Sorry about the picture again. Like uh, before, like I told you, I, I just got them from Wikimedia Commons. Uh, so everybody can find it and see it for themselves but that's our martyr uh he was a son of a prince in uh czechia and uh our polish prince mieszko I, the uh, first um, the one who adopted christianity he got it from from that country because his first wife Dombro, dombrovka or dobrava was czech and uh, then uh, Saint Wojciech, or in English Adalbert, um, came to uh, bring Christianity to the north of uh, the, the ter territory of, of then Poland. We saw Roman's presentation with the borders, uh, amazing one last uh, last Sunday. So he. Uh, so he went to what is now northeast of Poland, kind of Pomerania, but this was Prussians, the, the, they were the original people, and they were from this uh, peoples around the Baltic uh, Sea uh, living there. So he wanted to convert them, and of course they had their own so-called pagan uh, deities. And the legend has it that he was resting under a, a holy oak tree, and uh, that he was murdered because he desecrated the place this way. This way, so the the Polish uh, prince uh, had to pay with uh, the weight of the the body uh, of of uh, Saint Wojciech uh, in gold to 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 get it, and it was buried in Gniezno, which was then the the capital, the first capital of Poland, and. Uh, the cathedral was built and the, the door, the bronze door shows the whole martyrdom uh, of St. Wojciech and it can be looked at from his birth when uh, mm, uh, the mother gave birth and the two uh, ladies are helping and looking after the newborn and then this way and then uh, to the end. But it also can be shown, so here uh, where, when he was killed, can be looked at this way and then we have like the beginning of life and then what happens next so 
it's kind of symbolic in a way and of course interesting uh, decorations of, of the medieval uh, period. Uh, so uh, I thought that, you know, with this we have the, the kind of um, art as uh, serving religion and that was, um, it still is uh, a big purpose. And Ella, if I could ask you for the next picture, which will be Prince uh, Charles. So it's a shared purpose. So we're, yes. we're talking about links as well yeah. between countries. Yes. Uh, yes, and um, we have a portrait of the uh, Duke of York, Prince Char young Prince Charles, and in his, uh, so dressed to impress, I would say. So uh, kind of my, my um, take on, uh, on this uh, function of art or culture is kind of dressed to impress as vanity. And you know, so you look best, you you impress you, and you show off. And uh, the Polish version of it uh, is shown in a painting by Szymon Czechowicz. Can I ask you, Ella, for the man in the blue? Uh, and then we can mention Sarmatians and the influence of um, like Orient uh, in its earlier form. And last week we hosted uh, Hossein. Uh, I'm not sure if Hossein is with us today, if he managed to get to this meeting, from all the way from Iran. And Poland also had these links with, with Orient. Uh, Ella, I'm talking Number about six. the picture six. Uh, picture six. Uh, yes. And sorry about the quality of this picture, but I had to take it from the book that I have, and I highly recommend Polish Culture and Historical Introduction by Leszek S. Kolek. And uh, yes, so the picture shows um, Nav Mr. Uh, Navoy was his name. I don't know his first name. And he was the the protoplast, the founder of the three big aristocratic Polish families, and later on in the Baroque era, uh, this picture was ordered, but he, li he had lived much earlier, and uh, so he can't have been wearing these clothes, uh, because this shows this kind of uh, attire that is asso associated with the Polish nobility and this kind of like a national dress when nobility, nobility, Polish nobility kind of um, was convinced that they were coming from ancient uh, Sarmatians, like from uh, this um, antique people, uh, peoples, and uh, they came from this uh, ancient lands and uh, conquered them and then all those uh, who were beneath them the the um, peasants were uh, were just the the locals so they they, they couldn't mix so kind of uh, what the past looked like uh, and luckily we are doing our best most of us to to have this past behind us and this takes me to the uh, Battle of Grunwald, picture seven, Ella, if I may, please. Uh, and Ella, in her presentation, mentioned uh, Jan Matejko and the painting of uh, Copernicus, Nicolas Copernicus, the, the astronomer, the Polish astronomer. Uh, oh, thanks. Very detailed picture. So that's the Battle of Grunewald and uh, the date, I'm sure every Pole here knows the date, 1410. And again, uh, you know, the, you know, uh, course of history, I think I, I got the, earlier on talking about uh, the door, I think I got, I put Prince, uh, the prince's name wrong, but never mind. I'll continue with the Battle of Grunwald. I'm also stressed, sorry about it. So that's like for the British, for the English English people, uh, the ba Battle of Hastings, everybody knows the date. Uh, for us is, is this date. Although 1066 is the, the date of the kind of last successful invasion. And although there were turbul turbulences and uh, unrest uh, in this country, but uh, yeah. 
un, uh, unfortunately, Poland being on a continent and be, between different pe different peoples who had appetite for this fertile land wasn't so easy. So the Teutonic Knights uh, were invited by a prince to to bring Christianity to this uh, area where um, pre where, where uh, Saint Adalbert was murdered. Uh, so under this excuse, uh, therefore good, and they were causing trouble attacking Poland. So finally, uh, the Battle of Grunwald uh, solved that problem. They were defeated and they had to uh, give in to Poland and uh, approve that the, 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 the Polish king was their ruler. But Poland had to seek unity, union with Lithuania. Uh, because only together they were able to 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 face the Teutonic Knights with all the uh, a lot of Western Europe supporting them uh, under uh, I would say under the excuse of bringing bringing uh, religion. So Jan Mateko needs uh, a mention one of these nineteenth century wonderful talented people who brought um, who who brought back the important inspiring mo great moments of the polish history uh, to um, to help the the nation to help the polish people survive the time of partitions the, the whole 19th century and here is this great moment and uh, the whole picture which will be on display on show at the national gallery the 21st of may is so we, 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 we not even a week it will be possible or a conversation we've got and that's the theme of the uh, art competition by the polish educational society and this fascination with things medieval was was also in this country in the 19th century for uh, maybe different reasons but there's possibly because of increasing industrialization and the the loss of uh, the loss of a kind of older life, but it, it's the time of neo-Gothic buildings and again stories about medieval times, which were very very popular in the nineteenth century. Yes, and then this, this this takes us to the next picture with because we can go on with Sienkiewicz and talking about uh, in literature talking about the the great Polish past and glorifying it to to to. Um, uh, make people more uh, aware to to make it easier for the, for the people. So, because I think it was from a different uh, site, so I I decided to put it this way. So it's from the National Museum in Krakow, as you can see, and uh, of I I, I like uh, Stanisław Wyspiański's art and its uh, motherhood, and uh, one of my my many favorites because i don't have one my one favorite but you you can see this is the a very good example of this young poland moda polska and you know similar period uh, as um, arts and crafts here to uh, similar to arts and crafts and uh, the that's why i thought yeah ella you can please show uh, morris uh, to to uh, to show how how our countries kind of work similarly, and to again mention uh, William Morris House and Gallery about the uh, exhibition on Young Poland uh, in autumn this year. So the next one, Ella, is uh, William Morris, and sorry because he is such a great artist, but I, I chose this also because of many of uh, the the things he said here. Tony, with your radio voice, would you read? No. Please. The true secret of happiness lies in taking a genuine interest in all the details of daily life. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful museum, William Morris Museum, in Walthamstow, which is really worth a visit. And we went to see a Wispiansky uh, talk. Yes, by Julia Griffin. Yes. Exhibition there a couple of years ago. So that, that connection is, is really interesting. And that's the book that's published, a uh, joint effort between Poland and I'm showing on my screen, I don't know if you can see. But if you put Young Poland in the search engine, that's what pops out, you know, like 20 searches would be this book by different publishers. So Julia Griffin, a Polish lady, uh, and Andrzej uh, Szczerski, also a Polish man, in cooperation with, uh, with the William Morris uh, Gallery. 
Uh, and now we made a big jump because poster art, and that's reference to last uh, week when our Iraqi uh, artist, Iraqi British artist uh, Yusuf Nasser, mentioned the exhibition of Iraqi of Polish poster school, world famous in Iraq. Um, and here we have uh, two men. Uh, they formed a partnership. They were. Uh, because Poland was very um, cosmopolitan, we can mm -hmm. say multicultural. Uh, and uh, it was only after the Second World War that we kind of, we had, there was this policy of making it very, very homogeneous, even through religion, because there was religious tolerance for many centuries in Poland. And, uh, you know, when Jews, for example, the Jewish people were persecuted against and uh, thrown out of many, many countries, uh, they, they could settle in Poland. And those of you who have visited Kraków know of uh, Kazimierz, the, the district uh, inhabited by, by the Jews, etc. And of course, like in every, every uh, society, there, there are positives and negatives. So anyway, these two gentlemen, uh, Jan Levit and uh, George uh, Him, uh, their partnership lasted for almost 20 years and they made fantastic posters and advertising materials then they went separate ways and again it's really worth uh, finding out about them and i think i have the book which looks really 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 poorly can you see that's the cover and you know i'm i'm trying to uh, to rescue it but these men uh, wrote it here because they, they came for some exhibition and then uh, their work was uh, like so much that they stayed here and lived here and then the war came. So this is something in Kazimierz Dolny, uh, this pearl of Polish Renaissance in uh, in central Poland that uh, Arkadiusz was talking about, mentioned uh, earlier. And then the next picture is uh, Topolski alive. I may ask for number. Yeah, there it is. Yes, I'm sorry, but again, that's how I could download it. And please forgive me, but this is something fascinating because this picture was made uh, by uh, Felix, to Felix Topolski in English. And he was a character. He also came here, uh, I think, in 1935. And then the king, um, George, uh, invited him. He, he was like a correspondent and then wartime uh, illustrator correspondent of, of, of the news uh, reporter. And uh, his form of uh, bringing uh, news was through, through such uh, paintings, drawings. And then um, after the war in '46 country member what organization uh, had this program of bringing true art true artist work uh, into schools and uh, Topolski was one of them who, who was invited and that's what he produced and this is typical typical English uh, people in in the picture and you know all the the kind of uh, stereotype so that's Felix Topolski and if you are in South Bank near Waterloo Station in the Arches, he you can visit a cafe. But for many years it was his gallery, and I I missed that gallery big big way. And I'm coming now to the to the last picture, and you know I just wanted to add it. Uh, it looks a bit weird, and uh, that's um, by you want I don't know anybody can guess by who. All right, I will not be making it longer. Cyprian uh, Norvid. So Norvid uh, is his uh, 200th anniversary of his uh, birth this year. So it's like a Norvid year. But he was a writer, was he not? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's why I put a picture. <laughs> but he was very much ahead of the, his times. Uh, you know, he was a thinker. Kind of, you can even classify him as a philosopher, poet, first of all, poet and visionary. And he was so much ahead of his time that he was misunderstood. He wasn't understood, and he wasn't liked because he kind of said things that weren't popular at all at the time. So I mean, and as you can see, he had uh, talent for 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 other uh, departments of art, and he was also a sculptor. And he's been to London, so that's why I'm mentioning him, just like another 
the much more respected uh, uh, Juliusz Słowacki, who also has been to London and who is probably much more known. And he was lucky to be a rentier, so he didn't have financial problems, unlike Norwid, who, um, who didn't have these means. And finally, he died in a pauper's place in Paris, and he was buried in a grave, you know, with, with other people who had no money. So at least now he, he has lots of recognition. So look out for an event on uh, Cyprian Norwid. And this kind of overview of different fun functions of art and kind of overview of, I mean, very, very short, but sorry, I took so much of your time, brings us to Oscar.